All right. Hey, welcome everybody. It's Chris Petrie. Thanks so much for coming by. We're doing exercises today on watercolor washes. You're going to have a great time. This is a no stress type of video where you're just going to go in and have a fun time. Break it down into a couple days or so. If you know, it's a somewhat long video, probably an hour and a half, I would say. We're going to be working here. So don't worry about it. Work at your own pace. You're the artist. You're going to figure out what you're going to do. But for the most part, we're going to cover like about uh, six different style um, exercises that are going to help you to build your um, uh, ideas on different types of washes you can use for your paintings. You know, So if you're going to create paintings in the future, you can always create some exercises first, and then you can use these exercises. You can put all these exercises that we have here that we're going to do today. You can put these in a folder, save them, and then when you're just working uh, in, in the future on any paintings you might be doing, you can always draw from these exercises and use these ideas for your new paintings. So we're going to start off, we're going to do some water and sky washes, beautiful ocean and uh, sky washes, light, beautiful blue sky. We're going to do like a water, like a pond, a lake and a pond and lake type painting with just the water with some really, really darks and muddy looking colors down here in the foreground and some green algae and things like that. So that's really fun. So these are your water style uh, exercises. And then next we're going to do a uh, field and sky, like a farm scene. So here we're going to do like a farm scene, a light blue wash for the sky, golden colors like the wheat you would see in the farmlands, and then some greens, some grasses and things like that. Here we do a coastal area beautiful big blue skies, clouds, ocean, waves, beautiful white wa waves coming in, crashing into the coastline, and then you have some gorgeous rocks, some beautiful dark warm color rocks, warm and cool color rocks along the coast here. That's our sec fourth, fourth actually exercise. Then our fifth and sixth exercises are, um, we're going to do some distant mountains here, purple mountains maybe out in the west of like the United States. I live in the United States so here we have beautiful purple mountains in the distance, other mountains closer by and then some fields and cool interesting colors for our foreground and then finally we wind up doing a beautiful cityscape scene where we're doing those beautiful scenes where we have those distant colors of the haze and uh, uh, cooler grayish colors in the distance of the buildings and then as the buildings get closer to us we get those darker tonal values and then finally our closest buildings to us are the darkest darks we explain all this glazing technique here in fine detail so all these things are covered here in this video i'm hoping you're gonna have a great time just jump in have a good time and um i'm sure you're gonna get a lot out of it and we will see you uh, just in a few seconds as we start our first painting, we're going to do our water and sky washes first, mountains and our distant cityscape last, and our middle we're going to do some farm scene sky washes with fields and wheat, and then we have a coastal scene there in the middle, so the whole video is going to be six compositions overall practice exercises. Again, we're doing it on printer paper, so you can just have a good time, no stress, make a mess, have fun, and we'll see you in just a second as we start our first composition, okay? Hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. Welcome again. We're doing some really fun practice techniques this time. So, just a little quick uh, start here is... Um, as watercolor artists, you actually you can't believe how much benefit you can have by practicing um, exercises with your watercolors and your brush techniques and your drawing techniques and so forth. It really does help tremendously. Um, I made a lot of progress um, with working on this type of uh, exercise, so I hope you'll try it too. Try it as much as you like. Um, and I think the more you do these type of exercises, the better your watercolors are going to look. Absolutely. I, I just, I know it, that your watercolors are going to look a lot better if you're practicing these type of techniques. And the, the main reason why I would say that is, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, or maybe think about it for, you know, a few, and then maybe you can leave a comment, you know, comment in the comment section about it. But 
the thing is when you practice when you're not stressing out because you know usually when you start a painting you know you want to make it look perfect so do I when I'm doing my paintings I want to I want it to look great and so when you're doing practice when we're when we're doing practice swatches like this and practice um, uh, exercises there's no pressure and that's a really fun thing because when you don't have any pressure and it's just some exercises we're practicing then we don't have to worry there is no uh, having to create a beautiful painting or a perfect painting or you know something that we're really going to be happy with or anything like that there's no pressure you're just actually going in and thinking about the raw methods and techniques you're using on your exercises and focusing on your technique with your brushes and your pencil if you're going to do some pencil work first before you do your um, exercises that we're going to do here but for for this point we're not really going to do um, any pencil work we'll just do brush work so I have some of my favorite you know extreme beginner um, type of brushes it's just the um, Princeton art and brush company brushes it's a brush set it comes with like five or six brushes these are like three of the brushes there's a few more in the set these are great they're inexpensive they're also uh, natural uh, they're actually synthetic hair brushes so that means that it's going to be easier as a beginner if you're painting and doing these exercises you're not going to have like too much water in your brush because a big problem I think with watercolor artists if they go out and they buy natural hair brushes like the fancier brushes that maybe cost 30 or 40 dollars a brush those kind of kind of brushes are really great and later on when you're painting two or three years later you know and you're maybe you know you've, you've kind of had some time under your belt those brushes can be really fun to use and they are but when you're just starting out you don't need uh, natural hair brushes because again they're going to be more difficult to handle because they hold more water and when they hold more water that means you're going to have more uh, paint and water flooding out onto your paper and in your palette and that could cause problems not to go off on a um, on a beaten uh, track here but let's let's stick to the thing here we're going to do some really fun exercises so I have a couple brushes these are the extreme beginner brushes we always use you know these you're familiar with these brushes or something similar so I'll put these over to the side and maybe we'll start out with uh, the uh, flat brush here and what we'll do is we'll just we'll title our swatches and our, our exercises so this one here we're going to call uh, water let's do water so this is just kind of like a, an idea of water and if can you believe it we're using printer paper let's just use printer paper for exercises like this we don't want to use um, our good watercolor paper it's expensive you know you don't have to do brush work and practice brush work and things like that you don't necessarily have to have the fancy paper the really good stuff so already I'm making a mess here and that's what watercolor is all about you know uh, make a mess don't stress that's my motto <laughs> so there we go we're just taping down our paper here our printer paper so that it's, it's taped down it won't move around on us you, we don't want to have that happen and then we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to take the idea of water and then just have some fun with it so I have some fresh crystal clear clean water over here <clears throat> to my right and I usually uh, have either a um, tissue or a paper towel in my left hand to just dry off a little bit of water but um, you know you can use a sponge sponge too next to your water pail on the right hand side so I always have my water pail over here on the right and I always you know rinse my brush dry off a little bit of water go in and get my paints do my painting uh, if you're left-handed you'd probably be doing something different you'd hold your brush in your left hand you'd have your um, tissue in your right hand your water bucket would probably be over here and your palette would probably be over here or over here it doesn't really matter you set up your you know you think through your setup as far as how you like to set your paint palette up you know your palette your water bucket do what makes sense to you there's other videos out there on YouTube thousands and thousands and thousands of videos on um, all kinds of techniques I have some technique videos you can look up if you just type my name in there Chris Petri P-E-T-R-I you type in that into YouTube and just hit your favorite subject, boats, Chris Petri boats, Chris Petri exercises, Chris Petri swatches, and you'll find I have three or more, three, 350 or 400 videos now over the last five or six years on YouTube. So chances are you're going to find something that I'm doing all the time 
on the on my uh, previous videos so you can always look those up and if it's if you're here for the first time welcome thanks so much for coming by i really appreciate it i'm always happy to see new people coming in and checking out my channel and i'm hoping you're going to stay here and have a great time with us painting drawing and painting and watercolor that's all we do watercolor 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 everything watercolor so now we're thinking water and this is our exercise we're going to do water washes so let me get some washes in the, the palette so if we were doing a real painting we would say oh well let's get some paint in our palette first and prepare i rinse off my brush a little bit you don't sometimes you're going to want to keep your colors separated like that so that's why you would br you would rinse your brush each time you go to a different color not every time but to try to keep your colors um, separated somewhat so that they're distinguishable from one another that's a really helpful thing all right so let's think of the water water a water theme and then let's take our flat brush and just let's do some water let's start up top and we'll just go across like this and all I'm doing is taking my hand resting on resting on the paper like resting on the paper rest lightly resting my hand on the paper and then just sliding across sliding my hand across the paper very lightly so that I can just take my brush and literally drag it along like this and there we have it and then we'll take some green some little bit of that uh, greenish blue almost like a uh, turquoise or viridian style green and then we have some water type washes and that's perfect see that so when you're doing water typically you're always going to be going in a horizontal fashion like this you know it's going to be a, a water scene ocean uh, lakes rivers whatever you're going to be going in a uh, horizontal fashion with your brush across and you're going to be wanting to mix a few different colors if you're going to be doing an ocean or a lake or a pond or whatever you're going to want to mix your colors you don't want to have just one color that looks boring so that's why I did it this way you know I added some of that green you can go in and add a little bit bit more of the darker green less water now to maybe get a little bit of a darker um, and then you can even take and do this you could spin your brush around like this so that your brush is facing this way and then you you know you hold your brush up you know like a pencil so like as if you're writing in you know you're doing script writing or if you're printing and doing a note like on a pad a notepad and saying oh i have to do this go to the store and get milk and bread you hold the brush the same way you just turn it instead of this way you turn it this way you get some straight paint no water hold it like a pencil and then you can just do some lines across there and voila look at that <laughs> isn't that great you instantly you get some beautiful waves in your um water and then you can even say to yourself, wow, this is almost like a sky and an ocean. So we can say, let's change the name of our exercise right away from water and sky. Because this looks like sky up here, so let's just go with it. Don't worry about it. There we go. And water. See how that is when you're a watercolor artist? Does that make sense? When you're a watercolor artist, you got to be creative. you got to think of these things and say, oh, wow. I just did something it's kind of new it's interesting it just happened you know like a free type of thing and i realized wow this this could be a sky and that could be the ocean perfect then we just do a little changing around and say oh now it's water and sky that's all have fun with your watercolors enjoy and these exercises are fun and free that's what it is have fun when you're doing your exercises because that's the time you can have fun there's no uh, end goal in sight we're just doing exercises you're going to take these and put them in a folder maybe or you might just put them in the recycling bin it doesn't matter if you like them and you think you want to save them for future reference you put them in a folder if not you just throw them in the recycling bin or even in a file somewhere or in a box for you know future reference if you want it's up to you so let's do some more let's do um let's do some darker blue maybe We'll do some more water this time. We'll do maybe we'll do some blue and maybe some brown here. We're going to actually start creating maybe a darker, maybe like a lake. So with a lake, we're going to want to 
maybe add some green and brown green and brown and some blue purple too maybe even some orange let's see how that looks that looks pretty good orange green kind of like a nice brown with like some different colors mixed in the brown so let's try doing like a lake this might be an ocean so we could even do this let's call this water and sky let's call this uh, ocean okay so the next one let's do a lake let's have fun here all right um, let's do a lake let's start out with the blue we'll do two ocean let's do the lake down here again I'm resting my hand on the paper and this is printer paper too so don't worry you don't have to use your fancy watercolor paper when you're doing practice exercises you can definitely use printer paper look at that you have a perfect blue wash let's do another and let's do like four four brush strokes across and same thing I'm resting my hand on the page and just going across picking up more paint as I need it I want you to do the same thing as you go like that okay now we're gonna go right in get some of that brown and we're gonna start adding some of that brown wash in here let's go with some more green brown maybe a touch of black rinse off the brush maybe some orange and red let's get lots of stuff mixed up in there okay let's do that let's just make it a a lake kind of feel there we go kind of that muddy looking lake colors brown let's go with some more green get your brush in there just straight paint no water get some more of that Perfect. Sometimes there's some of that green, some some green um, algae on the lake. So let's put some of that green algae in there. So I rinse off my brush now. And I think that's good. This is a good lake type of look. Greens, blues, browns, a little bit of reds and oranges in there mixed in too. You can't really see the reds and oranges all that much, but it does affect that kind of color. You do see some reds and oranges here and there. I can see it from here. You might want you can check your watercolor um, exercise paper as you're painting this and you can kind of see I did mix red and orange in here in this brown with a touch of black to give us some real dark colors which really looks good and then we'll label this one too let's label this one and let's call this one a lake or pond lake slash pond and then this is water That's sky, water, and this one's completely water. You can even do uh, further notes. You can say, you know, let me, maybe I can add some other notes in here just in case I'm, I'm looking at this uh, six months or a year from now and I take these notes out of a folder and I look and let's, let's say um, lake pond with uh, green, algae and dark washes and then up here we can say ocean and then we can say you know greenish greenish ocean with light blue sky so you make some notes for yourself and you can use this for a painting in the future you might say you know what let me go back in my folder let me see what I have ah perfect water and sky 
And then maybe you take this idea and then you add in like a sailboat or two and you can have a painting. You can have a beautiful, whatever size you like, painting with using this exercise as your guide. And you can even write down the colors too. And you can say, oh, you know, I used, um, um, I used, the only thing with this is I don't have these colors, um, names for all the colors of these, um, paints in this palette. Although I do on another video, if you go back and you search out, um, Chris Petrie palettes, you should be able to find just recently within the last six months to a year, you should be able to find a video where I kind of, I assign colors for each of these with colors that I use on my regular palette, my everyday palette that I use, which is two paint, my squeeze two paints. So here I can tell you right away, greenish ocean with light blue sky. So I can say, um, ocean, colors, and then I can tell you that it's, um, cerulean blue, French ultramarine blue and uh, uh, Viridian green, Viridian green, Viridian green, and then I can say sky equals cobalt blue, um, cerulean blue. And maybe just a um, little Viridian Green. So this is how you can work out and formulate your colors. Eventually, when you're working with your paints so much all the time, after maybe two, three, four, five years, you can kind of just look at the colors and you wouldn't even have to, you wouldn't need any of these notes because you'll just look at it and go, oh yeah, I see what colors those are. Those, you know, this is Viridian Green and some cerulean blue for the ocean colors um, with a little bit of maybe some blue in there some french ultramarine blue and then my sky wash is kind of like french ultramarine blue and cobalt blue with a touch of the green and then you know you would kind of be able to that's your goal your goal is to be able to kind of look at your paintings look at your exercises whatever it is other people's paintings famous artist paintings any paintings you can find in books magazines on the internet DVDs, whatever it is, if you're looking at other artists' watercolors, eventually you want to be able to kind of look at them, the paintings, and say, oh yeah, I can see the colors they're using, and you should be able to kind of pick it out and say, yeah, that's a, a cerulean blue sky or a cobalt blue sky, and, and we all we all try to do that, so I'm always trying to do that. I'm always looking out in nature, too, and going, oh wow, that looks like a, uh, yeah, like a, a yellow ochre uh, field in the farm, so I'm, I'm driving through some farmlands in, in uh, my area, uh, where I live nearby, there's some farmlands not too far from where I live. I look at the fields and go, wow, yeah, that's that's like uh, yellow ochre and some orange colors in the fields. And you can kind of pick out the colors because you just your eyes are adjusted to your palette. And your, so that's your ultimate goal is to try to memorize your, the names of the colors in your palette. And then eventually when you're looking out in everyday life, you're looking out and you see a car drive by and you can go, oh, yeah, that's a cadmium red car. Or, oh, yeah, that's a... Um, a cerulean blue uh, pickup truck or whatever it is so you'll kind of pick out all these things as you go as an artist have fun with it enjoy learning all your colors memorizing them memorizing the names of them looking at them kind of you know always trying to maybe once in a while looking out into nature or in a sky or a field or just everyday things pick out the colors try to match them up to what you know is the colors you're using in your everyday palette that you work with and you'll have a great time of it Okay, so because it's all about just trying to memorize as much as you can so that that is just you, you have it under your belt and you don't have to worry about it too much. And then you get to that point where you just you can look out anywhere and you'll instantly see the colors of your palette out and whatever you're looking at, whether it's from on the Internet, pictures, magazines, real life, whatever it is, you'll look at the colors and go, yeah, that's a yellow. That's a cadmium lemon yellow. That's a cadmium orange. Yeah, that's a cerulean blue. You'll you'll do that automatically. So you'll you'll eventually get there. It's just going to take a little while, a couple of years maybe. Stick with us here. We're going to take a quick break, 
We'll come right back. We'll do some more swatches and some more exercises here, but I just want you to have a good time with this. And again, don't use up your good paper. Just use some printer paper that you have around, some office printer paper. And, um, you know, you do that, you'll be happier. You, you'll kind of, you won't be kind of aggravated that you have to use too much watercolor paper. And uh, I get the same way too. I don't like using up good paper for exercises like this. That's why I'm using my printer paper. And let's continue on. So we'll get a fresh piece of printer paper here and we'll start working on some other things. Maybe we'll do a couple of, uh, maybe some fields and grass and things like that. So we'll change up the, the idea of water and sky. Let's do some fields, maybe some mountains too, okay? And again, all in the idea of practicing exercises. They're fun, they're free. You're, there's no stress. You're just having a good time doing it, okay? So we'll be right back. All right, so we just took a quick break and we're continuing on here. And I'd always like to mention, if you like uh, this channel, you like my videos, please uh, consider subscribing on the right-hand side down here. On the right-hand side, there's a button, subscribe button. All that subscribe button does is it just lets um, YouTube know that you want to see my videos first in your uh, YouTube channel. So when you open up YouTube, you'll see my videos first, and this way you don't lose track of me. Because I know, you know, if you're just starting out and this is the first time you've seen a video that I'm creating, you know, if per, for some reason you take a break and you come back two weeks later, you might forget my name. And you're saying, oh, I remember that really good video that guy made on watercolor exercises, and now I can't find him. And you're looking around, and you can always find me, I guess, if you go back to your history button. There's a, always a, YouTube has a history button if you click history. You can see all your previous videos that you've watched over the last like two weeks or a month or whatever. So you can always find me that way, I guess. But if you do subscribe, um, it just locks you in. You, you'll have me here uh, on your channel. So whenever you open up your YouTube channel, you'll see my videos up first. And then you'll be able to watch them, check them out. Eventually you'll work uh, on the uh, exercises we're doing here. So we're going to continue on and do some more exercises here. So the next one we're going to do is uh, let's do some uh, fields, fields and sky. And then we'll get into further notes on this, but we'll just start out with the idea of fields and sky, kind of free, fun. Let's start out with that idea, then we can refine it. And then we're just gonna take our spritzer bottle. We took a break for about uh, an hour. So I'm gonna re uh, invigorate my colors. I'm going to clean up the palette a little bit here, so I'll spray the palette a little bit. I'll take some paper towel. I buy those paper towels, you know, they're very, uh, really economical. You, you, they come in little small sheets like this, the paper towel, and then you can tear them in half or use the scissors and cut them in half, and then you have just a quarter of a sheet of paper towel. And then I just go in and just kind of wipe up the... Uh, paint colors we were using before. Let's keep our palette clean. We don't want to keep mixing up colors over colors over colors. It gets to be very unpleasant looking after a while. So if we keep a clean palette, we're going to ensure that we have nice, clean, pure colors as we're working. So we do that. Okay, and then um, we'll continue. We'll keep using our flat brush. Um, I'm going to change my water out, so I have a, a large bucket in my studio, and then I use this smaller water pail, and I just constantly dump out the water and add new fresh clean water numerous times throughout a painting so that we have nice clean water. And then uh, let's start out here, field and sky color as well. Let's try this, a little bit of brown. Orange, yellow. Maybe some orange over here, a little bit of orange and red. So that looks like, to me, if we were in the countryside, driving around through the farmlands, maybe there's some wheat, wheat colors and in the fields here, and then some orange to mix it up, maybe a little bit in here. And then maybe some green, let's mix some green too. Some light green, some medium green. 
So now what we're doing here is again, we're building good habits. Let us mix our colors first in our palette. Think about the painting we're going to do. We're going to do an exercise with fields. And so we put some color out on our palette just so when it comes time when we start painting, we always know watercolor is a fast medium, right? When you start painting, uh, you need you need to probably move pretty quickly in a, in a watercolor painting for the most part. Most times it's a fast medium. I don't know if people have mentioned it too much, but I always say that watercolor is a fast medium. You kind of have to have stuff. The better, the, the more you can plan ahead with watercolor, the better you're going to be. So if you can mix your colors first on your palette, and if you can really keep that, that thought in your mind of, wow, hey, I got to mix my colors first. This way, when I start going in and painting, I'm not trying to figure out what colors I'm going to use. I already know the colors. They're actually out there on my palette. And then all I have to do is just go in, grab the colors, and get it on the paper. That's kind of the goal. Um, I know some watercolor artists, they might mix a little bit as they go here and there. That's fine, too, if you feel comfortable with that type of a, a methodology. But for me, I'd rather have my colors all ready to go. And then when it comes time to paint and I start going in and do my, my painting, I want my colors there. So I just don't even have to think about it. I already know. I'm going in and getting these colors and putting it on the paper. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to go here first. Orange and yellow. Cool, and then some brown. So we have kind of that cool. So this might be some... And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to move my hand lightly across the paper like that and I always I have some if I want to check off some water I can do that and again I'm just sliding my hand across the paper lightly some more yellow here and if you're painting on printer paper, this is printer paper, if you're painting on printer paper, you're going to see some weird looking lines and things. Don't worry about it. It's not watercolor paper, so it's going to look a little different. But the main thing is we're just kind of getting some ideas with colors, with brush strokes, learning how to do the brush strokes. That's the thing. We're doing exercises, so don't worry if it doesn't look, you know, 100% great. Now we're going to go in and get some greens. So let's pretend this is the field up above, and then we have some greens below. This might be some grass. So here's our plantings. We have some wheat, some wheat up here. And then down here we have some just regular grass and farm, farm grass that's along the fields. Like that. And that's all you have to think about. Like that. And there you go. And I think that looks really good. So again, we're using that method of just resting the hand gently on the paper, touching the brush down, and sliding our hand across with the brush, touching the whole time. And we go right across, and we get a really nice looking, beautiful wash across the paper. And again, this is printer paper. It'll look a lot better when you're doing it on your watercolor paper. But if you practice this now, if you practice this now on printer paper, when you go to do it on watercolor paper in a finished painting, it's going to look so much better. You could make some gr grass type brush strokes here just by tapping on your tapping your brush across like this. That might be some of the tops of the grasses and things like that, the green grasses that go across. And then you have your wheat fields here. And then, hey, you know, why not? Let's go in and grab some blue light, just a little touch of blue. And let's make a sky wash. Why not? And I'm going to stay a little bit away from that edge there. You can kind of see that. Then we can go in and slowly meet up those two washes, 
just in case if the yellow wash, the, the golden wheat color, let's say that golden wheat color is still too wet, at least you, you can let it dry a little more, the wheat color, and then you can take a little bit of that blue color and meet up those two washes. So it's always good if you leave that little bit of space in between the two washes first and then kind of see how it reacts. Maybe you start over here on a corner, see how it reacts. If it's not making a mess and ballooning and cauliflowering out and making a, you know, like a kind of a, a mess on the paper, then you know, okay, well, I can blend them together now. I kind of see they're dry enough, I can blend them together like that. And you can do that. Okay, so now we've gotten a gorgeous looking uh, kind of a farm feel, so we have some fields and sky, so we'll we'll call this the sky wash up here. And this is the wheat field. And this is the grass. Here. And then we can do that, and like this. And there we have another exercise where we can use this in the future and say, you know what? We can use these same colors, this same idea, and then maybe we can just add in like a barn and a couple of horses or uh, maybe like a farmer or two, a farmer and a couple of uh, the uh, workers on the farm. You have a little f farmhouse. You know, you can create all kinds of cool ideas with this, but this would be the base of your painting, the sky, the fields, the grass. So you have that, and that's really excellent to do to get this exercise worked out. There you go, fields and sky. And we can kinda, let's call this a uh, farm scene. Okay, let's keep working. Let's see, next, let's try, let's first off, spritzer bottle, let's clean up our palette. Yes, there's going to be a little bit of waste sometimes when you're working with your palette and you're cleaning up your palette and keeping things clean. Yes, you're going to lose a little bit of paint here, but you really can't uh, help that. You have to keep cleaning the palette and lifting up all the old washes for this exercise. And then to start a new exercise, you need all new clean palette area. And I know a couple of really smart people that are on my channel, they're... they're You'll see them in the comment section. A lot of the smartest people are in the comment section and they're always asking questions and things like that. They would, just recently someone asked me, Chris, well, how about the, don't you waste a lot of paint cleaning up your palette? And I said, yeah, and I agree. Yes, it, it is a little bit of a waste of paint when you have to clean up the palette, but there's no other way to keep your palette clean and keep your colors looking fresh and clean other than washing the palette down a little bit with some paper towel and then, uh, you know, starting with this clean uh, working area. You really have to do it. There's, you know, there's no other way around it. You have to do that. So you do lose a little bit of paint. I agree. Okay, so we have, let's do our second exercise here. Let's try another field type scene. So we have a farm scene here. What else can we do? And again, this is fun. When you're doing exercises, you can just, on the fly, have some fun, create different ideas. Right? We're just going with the flow here, right? Fields and sky. Well, let's do another field-type scene. Well, we did a farm here. What else can we do? Uh, let's do a coastal area, coastal-type scene. So, um, we're going to, again, we're going to use our our flat brush. This looks good. We're going to clean. I'm going to empty my water. You can see my water. It's a little bit murky looking. Let's change that out. So then I just pour some fresh water. I use an orange juice container. That's how I keep my water in my studio here. I just keep filling up my orange juice container here. I drink plenty of orange juice. That's really healthy to drink a lot of orange juice. At least a good cup a day in the morning for breakfast. And then we have that. So I have these empty containers. I use those for my water fresh clean water in my water pail and um, let's continue on here let's do another let's do the coastal let's label this here okay coastal area 
coastal area. Let's do that. This I can tell is going to be a lot of fun. So let's coastal areas. Ro I'm thinking rocks. Let's do some rocks. So we're going to start out with some brown. And again, I'm thinking the idea of does this make sense? Um, you know, mix, let's mix our colors first. Let's not start our exercise and then start thinking about in the middle of our exercise what colors we're going to use. Let's go and start out first and get our colors in the palette like this. A little bit of black and a little bit of brown. A little bit of red. A little bit of blue. So we have a mixture of red, blue, brown, and a little touch of black, just a tiny bit of black to get a nice dark rock type color for rocks. We're doing a coastal area, so we need some dark rock colors. Let's do that. And then we're going to use what other colors? Well, we're obviously absolutely going to use some blue sky wash. So we have some blue sky wash there. And then some ocean colors, green and blue. So you can kind of see we're really, we've got the colors that we need. A uh, blue sky wash and some watercolors, green and blue, cerulean blue and verde and green. I'm using those names just because I'm familiar with those colors so I can just sort of um, call those colors what I see them as. This is a cerulean blue. This is viridian green. This is a cobalt blue. Cere uh, French ultramarine blue, basically. Between a cobalt blue. Actually, it's a French ultramarine blue. And if you added a little less water, or more water, less paint, that would give you a cobalt blue. So a cobalt blue would be like this. Just a little bit of this color here gives you like a cobalt blue and then if you add a lot more of that color then you get like a French ultramarine blue like that. Okay so let's do our let's do our sky first. I would say sky first and then we'll do our darker rocks and things at the bottom. Alright let's get going here. Sky wash first. And even on our printer paper, again we're using printer paper everybody if you're just tuning in and you happen to wonder what kind of paper we're using. We're using printer paper here. Just regular office printer paper to do exercises and we're having fun. It's no crime having fun here. We're just having a good time using printer paper which means we're saving money uh, and conserving on our watercolor paper usage because if we have good watercolor paper we don't want to use this on just exercises. Exercises are just that. We're just trying to get some ideas out on paper. So we've kind of started out our video kind of talking about that and now we're just working through some more exercises and we're kind of labeling what we're doing so we can take these put these in a folder and then we use them for future use because you know you might need some ideas sometimes you might think I want to do a painting today and you might think oh I'm kind of my mind is sort of blank I don't know what to do you start looking through your folder with all your exercises in there and then you come up with ideas and you say oh yeah I could use this kind of a uh, you know fields and sky type scene with grass and wheat fields and a nice beautiful light blue sky next thing you know all your creative juices are flowing and you're creating a scene and creating a painting and you're having a great time of it so the more you can do some exercises have them fun just free flowing good time you're, you're all set so we're gonna do the sky wash first and I would consider this like a cobalt blue sky like that, see, we're just getting some of that light blue, beautiful light blue color, cobalt blue almost. And then maybe we go in and grab some darker blue, like this, and we make a little bit of a darker wash up top. Usually the sky is darker up top and it gets lighter as it goes down into the horizon. And then, we said this is a coastal scene, so let's get some water. And again, my brush technique is simple. I rest my hand on the paper, lightly, on my working board. And if you can imagine, my working board is really large. It's like 
my working board goes up this way and it goes up another couple inches this way and my working board goes down about another eight inches or so. So my working board here, if you can imagine, it's, it's this much more below me like that. So I have a really large board and when I put all my stuff on my board, I have plenty of space that I can rest my arm and my hand on everything and, and do my work like this. So I'm just sliding my arm and my hand across like that to get the sky wash. Now, we can do a little splashing. And what else do we want to do now? So we're doing a coastal scene. Let's get some of that green ocean color like this. So now you can kind of see I'm using my brush like this and not like this. So before we were sliding our hand across like so, now I'm going to switch around and like I'm writing something like I'm writing, you know, hello, my name is Chris, you know, script writing or printing. That's how you're going to hold your brush, like you're using a pen or a pencil, like you're just writing a, a note or something. And I'm just going to do this and just slide the brush across and that's going to be some waves. It's going to be the coastal area, like so. Then I get some darker green. No water, just mixing some straight green right out of the palette. And you can see how if I just slide my hand across, I got my hand resting on the paper, holding my brush this way. And if you just slide your hand back and forth, and just here and there, let the brush touch down and lift it up, touch down, lift it up. You'll get your beautiful ocean waves. Where the uh, white bit of uh, washes and lines give you that wave action. Okay, now the exciting part is getting some of these dark rocks in there. Let's do that. So now I'm using the corner of my brush, if you can see that, the very, very corner of my brush right here. And you just have a good time and have fun and just pretend, uh, okay, maybe over here the rocks are going to be a little higher. Like that, and then they kind of get smaller down here. Like that, and then maybe another couple rocks over here. There we go. Now the key is we're going to let this dry. I'm going to rinse my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, go over here, get a little bit of, and just splash on a little bit of splashes. That gives us the feeling like waves crashing up against the rocks, like that. If they go up into the sky too much, you can always lift up a little bit, of, blot up a little bit in the sky area for your splashes if they're too high up. But that looks pretty good. What we're going to do is we're going to let this dry, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to add a little bit of the beach sand color along these rocks here. And then that'll be our complete painting, looking just fantastic. We'll add some of that golden beach sand color maybe into the water a little bit and even into the sky a little bit just to harmonize the whole look of this uh, exercise but we'll cover that in just a second okay so let's take a break we'll come back and we'll um, finish up our our uh, exercise here we're doing a coastal type um, scene with some exercise with some rocks like this. Plenty of rocks. 
jetties, stuff like that. And uh, we'll just let this dry and we'll come right back. Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been uh, invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315 686 4123. Again, their phone number is 315 686 4123. Or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at T I A R T S C E N T E R dot org. Again, their website is T I A R T S C E N T E R dot org. Um, I th I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just, I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And um, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something you was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses, but right now I'm just not, um, not geared up for that right now. So they have them though, for those that want to do online courses, but just a great resource and Beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping, there's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. Okay, we're picking back up again, everybody. Thanks for coming by and uh, continuing on with our exercises here. We're doing all kinds of fun exercises with watercolor. We're actually uh, just kind of really enjoying the fact that when you do exercises they're fun, they're free, no stress. You're just getting down some ideas on paper. We're using printer paper, which is totally fine to use if you don't want to use up your good, you know, stockpile of watercolor paper you have. I do this all the time when I do practice uh, brushwork and things like that to loosen up and just kind of get myself uh, a little more um, you know, uh, in that mindset of just being free, I do a lot, a lot of times I'll get um, even large paper. I buy like large pads of like 24 by 36 paper and I get a large brush, like a really, really large brush, like maybe something like a, um, this is like a number 10 uh, mop brush. I might use a number 10 mop brush and I'll get a really large 24 by 36 paper and I'll do washes with a large uh, mop style brush like this. And then you can just imagine you, you know, you, you get the feel of getting a lot of water and paint on the paper, but you're not really using really expensive paper. You're just doing an exercise, and I use very, very inexpensive uh, exercise paper that I buy. You just, you know, a pad of it for $5, a large pad of, um, uh, you know, practice paper, sketch paper. 
So always good to uh, practice. And uh, let's uh, let's finish this. So again, we're practicing our good techniques as well. So our good technique of watercolor is let's dip our paper towel in our water bucket and get some damp paper towel and then just go through our palette and uh, lift up our old paints that we have in there. You know, maybe sometimes I just do this so that you can see that what I'm doing here and kind of how I'm really, you know, fussy with cleaning up the palette. Sometimes I don't always clean the palette as much, you know, because if I see I just have green and blue here and it's not muddy looking with a lot of mixtures on it, I'll just leave it there and, you know, until we do our next exercise. But I just do this here the whole way through all the portions of my palette just so you can kind of see the importance of it. And it just really kind of, hopefully it solidifies in your mind that we are definitely concerned about keeping this area clean with washes. So again, I, uh, I will go in and I'll get our sand color. Let's, let's do some sand color. Orange, very light. Orange and a little bit of brown. orange and a little bit of brown, maybe a little touch of yellow. Then we can also use a touch of red, like that. This is the, um, this would be like a lizard and crimson red. That makes a really nice looking sand color, like warm, warm sand color. Also with the uh, orange and brown a little bit with yellow. And then we just do that. Let's add some orange like that. And let's add a little bit of orange to the water and sky. Now with the sky wash you got to be real careful. I would say the orange is going to be down at the horizon line here. So I'll just go across there with a little bit of orange. And then here we have some red and orange. Like that. And I think that's good. Just that little touch of orange and a little bit of the uh, Lizard and Crimson style red. And we put a little bit of that into the sand area where the rocks are. And right away you feel like everything just rings true on this painting. The beautiful blue sky, the a blue, beautiful a blue green water with some of the uh, green for the water, the uh, Viridian green, style green. And then some brown and black and a little bit of red mixed in there and orange into the rocks. So you have some really warm rocks looking feel over here at the base of the painting. So this is like a rocky coastal scene. And that's fine. We've done another excellent exercise. We've had fun. It's lighthearted, easy going. We're not stressing. So we just put over here sky. And then here we put, uh, well actually the sky goes down to about here. And if you have a little bit of that white tape, you can just white out some stuff if you make a mistake. And then sky, and then this here is the uh, rocks and sand. Rocks and sand here. Like that. So you can kind of see again, another great exercise, future reference to put it in that uh, folder or a box or whatever you have or a little place that you like to stash your uh, work that you do. You try to save some of these things and then you can refer back to it later. Same thing with photographs. If you have photographs you'd like to paint, you put those in a little box. You know, you always want to save as much as you can with your reference material when you're an artist because, uh, you know, a lot of times you need things to work from. You need things to, you know, kind of spur your imagination and ideas as you're working. So, okay, we're going to try one more. Let's so we did another two. So let's do two more. I'll get another piece of printer paper. Put this down here. 
and then we're going to get it set up. So we'll use some artist uh, drafting tape. I just take a little square piece on each corner, just so the paper doesn't move around. There's nothing worse than the paper moving around while you're trying to paint and draw, draw and paint. So I put all four corners down, just so it doesn't move like that. And we'll get started on another two. This will be our final two exercises. Let's do a, um, let's think about maybe a uh, mountains, mountains. Mountains in the sky. Okay. So, so far we, we've done sky washes with water, with fields, with coastal scenes. Now we're going to try some mountains in the sky. A little different than what we did before. So again, we're going to use our uh, flat brush. Again, it's the Princeton uh, Art and Brush Company. They come in like a six pack, four, maybe five or six brushes in one pack for like five, six dollars. Synthetic hair brushes, perfect when you're just starting out. So again, this is an extreme beginner's video. You know, you, you're going to want to start out with humble art supplies. You don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on art supplies at the beginning. When you're just starting out, this is plenty. You have your beautiful Prang Oval 16 set. I always advocate this. I don't get paid by uh, praying to uh, to uh, show you this. I'm just this is what I use when I do my practice work, and even I do some finished paintings with these paints as well. They're beautiful paints, praying oval 16. You can get these very inexpensive. These sets you can get them online, Amazon, any kind. You know, art stores have it. Um, art supply stores you can, in your area, your local area that you live in. You can get you can get these very. These are readily available. And between this Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set, and some Princeton Art and Brush Company inexpensive paintbrush sets, you're all set. And you can even use printer paper to practice most of the time. And then when you want to do a finished painting, you, you know, you use your watercolor paper. All right, so now we're going to continue on. Let's do mountains and sky wash. Uh, I think I'm going to do the sky wash first, so let's go in, let's do a simple let's do a simple cerulean blue sky wash. And I think I'm second guessing myself, but let me do the mountains first. So let's go with some purple. Purple first. Let's do some purple mountains. Those are going to be the distant mountains in the scene. Purple, a little bit of brown mixed in with the purple so you can kind of section off your colors. Maybe a little bit of brown and purple up here. Rinse off your brush good. Come back in. Get more purple. Purple down here so you have some, you know, little, we're going to mix our colors first again. That's what we always say here. On my channel I always mention try to mix your colors first in your palette. Then you start your painting and work from there. This way you don't have to be thinking about what colors are you going to use. You already know. I'm going to make some purple mountains. Also mix in some brown with my purple mountains, maybe for the bottom areas of the mountains. Sky wash. We had some of that uh, French ultramarine blue slash cerulean blue, uh, cobalt blue. Maybe a little bit of cerulean blue too for our sky wash. So. Sky wash here, mountains, and then maybe we're going to have some green colors here for our foreground where there's some grass fields, maybe some orange too, some orange and yellow grass fields. Okay, we have all our colors mixed now. Now all it is, let's just go in and get our mountains in. Okay, now let's just do this here. You can see I'm just carefully, I'm resting my hand on the paper. And I'm just trying to get in some mountains. 
I'm hoping you're going to have fun with this. It's not that difficult. And these are the larger mountains up here. Like that. There we go. And then let's just get right into it and let's start maybe a little bit of a bluish green for the distant grasses and hills here. Let's do some hills. I'm using the corner of my brush and again I'm using the brush like a, a pencil right now instead of going across this way I'm using the brush like a pencil using the like that sliding my hand again sliding my hand across the paper I'm resting my hand on the paper and just sliding it across with the brush just barely touching the paper then I rinse off the brush a little bit maybe use a paper towel or a tissue dry off the brush a little bit then maybe we're going to go in and get some of that yellowish green. Like that. And then as we move closer, we want to have more uh, brighter green color because it's getting closer and it's. We always remember that generally the farther the distance the uh, objects are, the cooler they are. So that means they'd be more blue. More of, more of a bluish color, a cooler color. And then as objects get closer to us in the scene, they're going to get more warmer, vibrant. So now we're doing yellow to add yellow, which is warmer, warmer yellow. Like this. And these are the yellow fields across the plains. And then as we get even closer yet, let's add more yellow and orange. So I hope you're enjoying this. This is really fun. Um, I'm going to take some more of this brown and uh, purple. And I want to make this a little darker. So I'm going to make a secondary brown, purple. A little bit of orange or red just to kind of get a little warmer. And I'm going to make a darker bit of mountains here. Isn't that great? Look at that! So now when you make this darker wash here, it makes this wash, which is cooler, a little more bluish and a little more purple, light purple, light blue, it makes that look oh, way far in the distance, right? Doesn't that look like that really looks way far in the distance once we added this darker wash? So that's why we, we do that, and then I'll just take some of this painting, uh, paint and add some of that there. And then, of course, we have the fields here in the front area. Like this. And I hope you're enjoying this very much and having a fun time with this. And uh, that is our beautiful mountains and sky. We'll add a little bit of blue, some really, really light blue wash for the sky. So we have some of that. We might say, you know what? We want a real beautiful light sky wash. Well, then what we have to do is we have some muddy looking water here. Let's 
dump that out. Get our new fresh, clean, crystal clear water. That's the first step to get a really light, really, really light, good looking wash, crystal clear water for our sky. Then the next thing we do is we, to get a beautiful, really, really light blue wash for our sky, we just clean up a section of our palette like this. So that we don't have any other colors um, sort of uh, muddying up the color of our blue that we want to use. So let's do that. We have fresh crystal clear water now. We're going to go in and add this type of a look. Just a really little, little bit of blue. Let's see how that looks. Before I do that though, I'm going to dry off my brush. and blend in that darker color that we put in here. Is that okay? And let's see, does that look all right? And if you see a little bit of color, you can just blot that up like that. Okay, let's try a little blue. Light blue, crystal clear water. I just changed out my water, fresh clean water. And I just went in and got straight one color, just this one blue right here, which is kind of like a French ultramarine blue with just a little bit of paint and mostly water. And let's just do the sky wash. Right across there. I'm sliding my hand across the paper like we did before. I'm going to be careful to go around this mountain shape very easily. I don't want to go and paint too much over that. Incidentally, this is a great look for watercolors if you can use a square brush all the time. Like if you do nothing but use the square brush throughout your whole painting and you kind of start seeing like these lines of square brush lines, that actually looks pretty good. That kind of gives you like a cubism type look. That can be a great technique to employ if you're looking for like a your own kind of look to your paintings where you want to do something different that no one else is doing. You know, you can always come up with little offshoots of ideas. And I definitely would say if you're using a square brush or a flat brush all the time, you're definitely going to get a look that, you know, is unique. I don't see a lot of people doing that type of a look. Okay, there we have it. Mountains and sky. And that looks great. Let's, again, we'll look at the notes on the side and say, well, this is the fields, and this is the mountains and sky up here. So that's good. That's already labeled for us, and that's good. We have a gorgeous exercise, another exercise under our belts. The more exercises, the more painting you can do, and especially these type of exercises, again, stress-free, no worries. You get it down on paper, you're moving on to the next one and on to the next one and on to the next one and you're not getting bogged down with oh my god I can't create a beautiful painting half the time you're practicing exercises the beautiful painting syndrome will kind of disappear for you because I know a lot of artists have mentioned that to me and even emailed me and said Chris I I'm stressing out I, I'm having a hard time because I'm trying to paint finish paintings and they're not coming out good the remedy for that is do lots of exercises and then occasionally you're you're going in and doing some finished paintings everything will go a lot more smoother for you so i hope this is a really big uh, encouragement for you as you're painting do lots of exercises and mix it in with your routine of doing finished paintings and you're going to be fine so i'm going to take one more break and then we'll do one more um, exercise here we've done a lot already we've covered water and sky we've done a lake and a pond type um, exercise. We did a field and a sky farm scene here. Then we did a coastal area with rocks, rocky coast with rocks and beautiful splashing waves. Now we did some mountains and sky with some beautiful fields, kind of using the same colors. You can kind of see how we're reusing the colors of our field here. 
we'll do one more. Well, I'm going to think about what I'm going to do next. Uh, again, I'm doing this, uh, you know, as I go so that I keep it, you know, fresh, free, fun. We'll do one more and then we're going to have um, a great time just recapping everything we've done and then we'll call it a video. All right, we're getting back again and getting started. Let's uh, clean up the palette. So we're going to do one last uh, exercise here. Let's do a cityscape. Why not? Do a beautiful cityscape with some buildings. Um, we're going to create some three-dimensional um, feel to the uh, city scene that we're going to create. So we've kind of did some oceans, some mountains. Let's do a cityscape. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, we mentioned before, uh, your lighter colors. Um, does this make sense? Your lighter and more cooler colors are in the distance, like we did with these purple mountains, these light, light purple mountains. That gives you that feeling of distance. Really, really light washes, not much heavy paint. Lighter on the paint, a little more water. That gives you your distant hills. And then as you get closer in the scene, you put in the darker washes and that gives you that feeling of the three-dimensional steps in your painting going back into the distance and in your foreground you're doing more brighter colors um, warmer colors here you can see like the oranges and yellows and things like that warmer warmer greens so let's do our cityscape let's start out with that and we'll start out up here so I'm going to put some of that uh, cerulean style type blue, a little bit of brown in there to kind of gray it down. I want a grayish blue here. So again, let's mix our colors first. So brown and that cerulean blue, like that, almost like a grayish greenish blue. That'll be our first wash as we have our distant buildings. And then as we move into the foreground, maybe we're going to do a little warmer purple so some purple and blue that'll be our next kind of like wash in the coming closer to us with some of the buildings and then once we have that then we're going to start working into some more warmer brown orange reds like that some brick brick colors and um, some blue in that as well. So we're going to do some blue with some orange. Like that. And then maybe in the very, very foreground, we're going to do some really, really dark brown, reds, some blues and purples, some darker darks touch of black to, to get some of that really nice dark darks in the foreground. So that's a good start. We mixed all our colors first in our palette. And again, that's the thing you're going to learn as you go through this video. And I would say, please go through this video a couple times because once you kind of really get that process going of lights to darks, mixing your colors first in the palette, all these things are really going to help you doing your... Uh, your paintings. So let's start out again since I've mixed all these colors my water has gotten really murky looking muddy looking let's empty that out. Always remember that once you start mixing out all your colors on your palette while you're preparing to paint a painting all that mixing process going all the way through this you'll need to change your water for sure and then you'll be ready to start your painting so that's just another kind of thing. Let's keep that in mind and that's pretty much will be okay. So now we're going to go with our buildings. And we, we said we mixed this really, really light gray color for our buildings in the distance. So I'll start out here and I'm going to use my brush. Again, we're using the same brush the whole way through on this video. This is the 5 8 inch uh, Princeton Art and Brush Company flat brush. And again, this set comes with about four or five brushes, so you'll get smaller flat brushes here, and you even, you'll even get some round brushes too in that set, so it's a great set 
of brushes. They're, again, these are acrylic um, synthetic brushes, which means they don't hold as much water, so you're not going to get too much water flooding out onto your paper, and you're not going to have an issue with too much water. So I'm going to start out again like as if I'm writing my name or uh, signing my name or writing some notes on a notepad, holding the brush the same way as if I would hold a pen or a pencil. My hand is on the paper, resting on the paper. And I'm going to start thinking of building shapes. Okay, there we go. A building shape. And then since this wash is so light, you can just run it down, down into the bottom of your painting, let's say. You don't have to worry about it, where it ends up. It's going to be fine. So maybe we have a couple buildings here. There's one there. There's another one here. Maybe there's an angled building there. So you're just kind of working your... Like that. And then maybe over here we're going to have a pointy building. So maybe here you're going to have a, a building with like a pyramid type look to it, like a triangle on top. And then we can drag this one down like so, and then maybe there's a little point on the top for an antenna or something, an uh, AM FM antenna. There might be a radio station on the top of this building. And then over here we have another, like this, another bit of, uh, and then over here we have another building coming. And then we have a lower spot. And another over here. So you're just making a um, group, grouping of rectangular shapes that you would see when you're looking at a cityscape scene. And buildings nowadays especially are very uh, modern looking. You have a lot of buildings with angles and curves and lines like that. Years ago maybe not so much, but now they're getting a lot more creative with their designs of buildings. So when you look out into your cityscapes, you're going to see that there are a lot of interesting more interesting shapes, curves, and things like that, lines that are, and uh, so we're just continuing on. And so we have another, and again, this is just a loose interpretation of uh, a cityscape. We're using that grayish, bluish, greenish wash all the way across and then um, we're trying to think of other shapes that we might be able to come up with that might be different we have some curves and lines and then this one might be another and then maybe over here we have another angular uh, building shape like that and like this and then we have another so you can just turn your brush this way and this way to get your shapes of your rectangles but basically it's all a grouping of rectangles with a couple interruptions of some um, pyramid type style um, tops to your buildings but this is real fun. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to take a quick break now because I want I want to let this dry really, really um, well. This this section of the painting, because this is more or less. We did a lot of um, brush strokes with a lot of uh, water and paint here. So when we go in with our second wash, which is buildings that are closer to us, that are going to be darker, with maybe some of the reds and the darker colors, we want those to, um, we don't want those to bleed out and cauliflower out and blossom and bloom out into this damp paper. So that's the key now. This would be like our glazing technique. If you've watched my videos and I always mention, please subscribe down below. On the right hand side here, if you subscribe, I promise you, you're going to get a lot of great videos coming up in the future. And as well, you can always go back into my archive videos, which I have hundreds and hundreds of other videos that explain all about 
the glazing technique. And basically the glazing technique is what we're doing here. We're doing a really, really light wash first, and then we're going over with another wash on top of this one, which we're going to make subsequent buildings in front of these buildings here. But the main thing is we have to let this dry 100%. This wash here that we just did, this has to be 100% dry before we go in and start doing darker washes. Does that make sense? Because if we don't, then it's just going to go and you're going to see all the paint going flowing everywhere and it'll look terrible. And then we'll have a big mess on our hands. So we don't want that. So that's the thing with the glazing technique, which is kind of like what we're doing here. Let this dry. Once you get this all the way across, all your buildings all the way across, you can use a blow dryer to dry this off or you can let it dry for maybe like an hour. If you let it dry for about an hour, it'll be fine and then you can start back in again. So that's up to you whether you want to dry it with a, a blow dryer or let it dry naturally, which is about an hour because this is thin paper. This is printer paper, so it dries pretty quick. But always remember that, you know, when you're doing this type of a glazing technique where you're doing a light wash and then coming over with darker washes on top, you must let this dry first 100% before you start going in and doing your darker colors on top of this. Okay, that's all I wanted to mention. We're having a wonderful time here and we'll be right back in just a second. I'm going to let this dry naturally for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then we'll start up again and we'll finish up this last exercise and then we'll have completed six exercises, all of them unique and different, but yet we're using the same ideas. Flat brush, mixing our paints first, getting our washes out first, and then getting our painting done second, our exercises done second, and then labeling what we're doing so we can save these for future reference. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, so we're getting back started again. We let our first wash again with our cityscape uh, dry, which is our greenish blue wash up here that we had, that we created. That was our first color we created which was our, you know, really, really, really light wash for that background for our cityscape. And then now we're just going to continue working and we're going to use some uh, of this kind of like red brick color. Maybe we'll add some blue to that. So we want to kind of make it a mixture of uh, blues, some browns, reds, oranges. Okay, so that's a little darker. You can kind of see compared to this up here, or I should say up here, we had that, that really, really light grayish wash over here, up here. Now we're kind of converting to the next wash, which is going to be darker, like this, which is your warm reds, reds and oranges, browns, a little bit of blue mixed in there too, warm and cool everywhere. You don't want to sort of make an abrupt change in color so if you always stick with warm and cool all the time you'll never have a problem of kind of having that sort of unpleasant look of just like uh, warm and cool and no mixtures in between so let's start again I'm right-handed I'm gonna start over here and work my way this way if you're left-handed you're gonna wanna use your left hand and start your painting and go this way and just kinda work your washes over this way this way if you slide your hand across and on the paper as you're working, you're not going to have a problem because you're always working to the left if you're left handed. And then if you're right handed, you're just going to start over here and do this like so. So let's do this. So we have a building here. And then you can go right down to the bottom of the page here. And then over here, I would say. We could start really doing some cool stuff like leaving leaving some cool, interesting uh, spaces between the buildings. That gives you some more interesting look uh, of uh, distance. And then uh, over here, maybe some lower buildings over here. So once you start doing your second wash remember this is our first wash first glazing now we're doing our second glazing um, we can we 
we can keep creating shapes. They're darker now, you can kind of see that. We're doing a darker wash as we go. And again, let's get some more brown, orange, red, a little bit of blue. Like this, and you can kind of see I'm just building up these layers. That's all I'm doing here. It'll make some triangles over here. Maybe there's some. And then maybe I'll change my mind and say I better keep these buildings up high. Like this. And we'll save the really smaller buildings for down below. Maybe those are going to be the. Like that. There we go. So you can kind of see how we've built up a layering effect. Lightest lights in the back, that grayish, bluish green for the distant uh, buildings. You can kind of feel like this is a hazy, hot, sunny day in the city. Then as your buildings are getting closer to you, so if we're standing here and we're looking out of a building window, maybe we're looking out of our apartment or we're in a park or something and we're looking into the city scene here, you can kind of get the feeling of that depth perception of the lightest lights in the very, very far distance, which would be the distant buildings. And then the buildings get darker as they get closer because they're, you know, uh, warmer and darker um, in the uh, So we do that. Now the thing is we have to let this dry one more time. I know this can be a little bit... Sometimes it can be a little bit of a hassle letting this dry, but you really have to let this dry now. So this is going to be our second glazing let this dry 100%, okay? And when you let this dry 100%, the second glazing, the darker middle tones, so we have some middle tones here. Lightest lights first, let it dry 100%, blow dry it if you have to. Second tonal values were the dark middle darks, like this. And then these are going to be the last darks here, the darkest darks of them all here. Those are going to be in the foreground, so we'll put those in next, but we must Without a doubt, we must let this dry. So you have to let this second wash, second glazing here, you must let this dry. So it's either blow drying it for five minutes or two minutes, three minutes, or one hour. Maybe you let it dry one hour if you're not going to use a blow dryer. And you'll see that after about an hour, it'll be fine. Okay, we'll be right back. I'm going to let this dry naturally and take a break and grab a cup of coffee. So I'll be right back. All right, we are rounding out our tutorial here. We're finishing up. So we're doing our cityscape, and we just mentioned again, just to recap as we're going here, um, we mixed our lightest light up here, which was our uh, greenish-blue uh, first glazing for our lightest washes for the cityscape here. Then once we got completed with that, we moved to our uh, medium tones, which were like the medium tones like so for our buildings here, which are closer to us. So we're building a feeling of the distance or the lighter colors, the cooler colors. So the cooler, cooler as in blue and green. Then as we get closer to us, we're getting more warmer colors, more reds, purples, you know, browns, oranges. And then now we're going to do our darkest darks, which are right here. We pre-mixed everything first, which made things easy for us. So let's do this now. Let's start with our darkest darks. And we're just going to... And 
And since these are our darkest darks, these are the buildings that are closest to us, and we can we can start getting more detailed. Maybe put some windows in there, you know, like so. So you can do some hash marks like that. And I just add a little bit of water to that. Tiny bit of water, not too much. Just so I can sort of... And you can add a little bit of detail, add some windows and things like that. And I'm making these smaller, these buildings here at the bottom because these are closest to us and these are more or less the and maybe we have one here kind of just you work your uh, buildings I'm gonna make a few uh, buildings with some uh, triangles on top because there's always and there's also p buildings that have uh, water tanks on top there too so if you're in the foreground you can add more details to things you can start adding in some details here and there you know, sometimes you're going to have penthouses on top, like elevator penthouses. You know, when you're looking at buildings in really fine detail, you're going to have all kinds of interesting things closer to you. As things get further away, you're not going to see much detail. But when you're kind of close like this at the bottom of the painting, you know, you can add windows across here. So I'm just kind of going across like this. If you're just doing some dots and dashes and things like that, it's going to look good. Maybe I'm going to do a couple. Like that. So you can be creative and do things. Just going to keep working our darks over here and then maybe we're going to have something over here a little bit of black a little bit of red orange a little bit of blue kind of mix all those darks together maybe we're going to do a building like this over here like that so you can kind of see how I did this I just really built up layers and layers of uh, of darks and lights as we go and again the darkest darks are in the foreground here middle tones over here like the middle tones across the middle area of the distance and then the far distance which we said was you know browns and blues like green black browns blues and greens so i have green brown blue green and that's sort of our distant color So 
So your far distant color, very, very light, bluish green, grayish color, middle distance, your reds, purples, reds, purples starting to get warmer, browns, warmer colors, middle distance, and then your foreground, your darkest darks, black, you got to add some black in there, and then you add all your other colors, your reds and oranges and blues, like that, and purple, and then you have your darkest darks there. And then you can have, you know, like I said, you're making more details here. And, you know, you can make some You can do more details as you go. And if you can leave these light areas here, these light areas here are important because that kind of lets you feel like there's city streets running through into the distance. So if you can leave those light areas, you can kind of see I left some light areas here, here, here here and here we if I, we can leave those light areas there that really is interesting because that kind of gives you that feel of like you're uh you can see through into the distance at the foreground level so even though we have our foreground with darkest colors um you can still see that we have we have the uh light shining through here and here and here and here and you can layer in some more could add a little bit of details anything looks good um, dashes dots lines like this I guess the key is to sort of leave them different all of them should be different so maybe here you have dots going across then maybe here you have lines going across like this like that and then over here you have dots And I think that's good. Okay, everyone, thanks so much for uh, watching. Thanks so much for subscribing on my channel. I know many of you that are just starting out. This might be your first time seeing my video. I'm thanking you that you're going to subscribe because you want to uh, see my uh, future videos because we're doing this type of work all the time, every week, every month, every part of the year. We're always creating new watercolor videos, all types of subject matter. This happens to be exercises, practice work. But we're always doing finished paintings too, so you can jump in and do finished paintings, or you can just hop along here and do some exercises once in a while. We do all of this type of content on my channel um, all the time, every week and again, every month and every year. We're constantly making new videos. So if you're subscribing down on the right-hand side, if you click that subscribe button, you know, you'll be uh, alerted on your YouTube channel. Whenever you click on YouTube, you'll see my videos pop up on your YouTube channel and they'll say, hey, Chris made a new video. And this way you can follow along and work with us too, paint along with us and have a great time. We're having fun here. No stress. Just make a mess. Have a good time. And we'll see you on the next video.